wanted to do another video here to uh, show you guys a simple trick for creating a, um, a fairly simple uh, hover fade effect, kind of like what you're seeing here. Um, it's a pretty quick trick and it involves only just a little bit of CSS and uh, you don't even need to use jQuery or anything like that. And uh, you can use this effect for a lot of different things and it's uh, pretty easy to do. So uh, let's get started here. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do this in Dreamweaver. What I'll do is start a, a new HTML document. And uh, just to match the, the demo I was showing you, I'll use sort of the same words here. I'm just going to type them out. And uh, what I want to do is these all need to be links. So um, I'm going to just turn them into links just linking back to uh, the current page here. Do this to each one of them. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, I'm just going to sort of group these all together in a, into a container. So I'm going to wrap a div around them. I'll highlight all of them and I'll uh, say insert div tag. And uh, I'm going to give this the ID of hover boxes. Okay. So now let's look at our HTML here. We have basically a bunch of A tags, link tags. Uh, all wrapped inside this uh, this hover box is div, which uh, opens here and closes down here. So we basically just group these all together. So what we want to do is uh, back over in Design View, I'll just click on one of uh, one of our links here, and I want to create a new CSS style. So automatically, this will bring up this uh, if we have our compound selector here, it will uh, bring up the CSS selector that's basically uh, are going to target all A elements, all our links, within our hover boxes div, uh, which is exactly what we want. We'll create a style that applies to all of those. Say OK. And I'm just going to start uh, adding a few styles here. Um, the key here really though is uh, if we go down to block and if we change the display property um, because right now all our links are call, kind of all on one line. They're, they're treated basically as text. But we want us to treat them more like a box, which uh, kind of like a div. So I'll change the display to block. And if I hit apply, we'll see what happens. Now we can treat the, all these links exactly as we would any other div. We can float them. Uh, we can apply height to them. We can add padding, whatever we want to do. So that's really the key to being able to, uh, to manipulate those links uh, to looking however we want them to. Now if we, we go to box, I can apply maybe some padding to the top uh, of each of these. I'll maybe uh, maybe apply like 40 pixels on the top and bottom. And um, I'll give each of them a width of maybe uh, 90. And um, I want them uh, each. I want the text to be centered in each of those boxes. So we'll go back to block, and say text align center, and that will align it in the center of each of those boxes. And uh, I'm just going to do a couple other quick things. I'm going to change maybe the background color to something a little nicer, maybe that blue. And I'm going to go change the type to you know whatever I want. Make that Arial. Um, take the underline off. Each of those are links, so I don't want any underline on them for now because we'll, we'll deal with the hover um, state a little better later. And I'll change the color to white. Okay, so that's pretty good. And uh, the other thing I want to do is I want them all sort of be to be uh, uh, kind of in more of a grid formation kind of thing like you, we had it. So if I go back to box, I'll change the float to left. And now they're all kind of uh, side by side because um, because they're all floated beside each other um, because that float is applied to each one of those boxes. 
So um, this is pretty good for now. I'll say OK. And uh, if we uh, either preview this in a browser, or I'll just go to Live View. We can look at this, and each of our clickable links are, you know, that nice uh, big clickable area that we like. Um, the only thing is we don't have any kind of hover state uh, for when we um, put our mouse over. We don't really get any feedback to see that we're hovered over it. It might be nice to do that. So if I turn Live View off, um, what I want to do is uh, we'll look in our code and uh, we can see right here, this is all the CSS styles that we just uh, created um, in our CSS panel. See, we have a bunch of different CSS styles. These ones apply to hover boxes A. What I want to do is I'll create a new uh, style block, so I'll just copy that for now. So this opens, this little curly brace, brace opens my style block, and I'll just close it there. And inside this, we can put um, some different styles. But first, what we want to do is we'll change the CSS selector a little bit. What we want is uh, to create an alternate set of styles for if the user is hovered over it. So if I just put colon hover after my A there, uh, no space in between that or anything, um, we're going to uh, uh, define a bunch of different styles now for um, when the user is actually hovered over that, uh, e e any one of those links. So the only one I'm actually going to put in here though is if I type opacity and I'm going to set the opacity um, for when we're hovered over this. Um, I'm going to set it for now just to 0 0.5, which would mean it's like 50% opacity. And I'm just going to uh, live view this now. Okay, so now when we hover over this, you can see that it changes the opacity uh, to like 50% of uh, whatever whatever. Um, whatever color it is or you know if you have a background image that would work too it's basically just changing the opacity um, what we actually want to do though is sort of the reverse of this where the other ones are all um, faded out by default and when we hover over it it goes to sort of full opacity so let's go back uh, over to our um, our code here and I'm just gonna copy this uh, s specific style and I'm going to move this actually up into sort of this uh, this block here is sort of our default state, uh, which we originally created. And I'll change the opacity, or I'll put, I'll put the opacity thing in there. And I'm going to change it maybe to something a little more reasonable, like 0 0.8, so it's not so faded out. And I'm going to um, put a similar one back in this uh, um, the hover style. And I'm going to make this one just one, which means full opacity, 100%. So I can preview this again in Live View. And now it's sort of faded out a little bit by default. And when you hover over it, it's sort of that full uh, opacity. Now this is pretty neat, but uh, there's one more thing we can actually do. We can make this uh, a nice fade transition. And the way we do that is uh, if I open up my browser again here, and I just go to Google, and I'm going to search for CSS tran transition generator. Okay, and I'll just use the first result, CSS3generator.com. And there's actually a lot of different cool things you can do uh, with the CSS gener the CSS generator, but uh, I'm not going to go over those right now. I just want to go down to transitions here. And we have a different, a few different things we configure, can configure. Um, property we would select. Uh, we, we'll just say uh, leave this at, uh, as all, but we could actually animate a few different properties here. You'll see, uh, but we'll leave this at all for now, um, and that will animate any property we want. And uh, duration we can, um, we can make. Uh, you know, we'll use milliseconds, and we'll make this maybe 300 milliseconds. And uh, function, we're, we're not even uh, we're not even going to mess with this uh, because the default one will be fine. But uh, this basically changes the um, sort of the way it animates. Uh, you might want to you might want to play with those if you want uh, different effects. 
So what I'll do is there's a few different uh, lines of uh, CSS declarations here, and these are basically just um, uh, the same. They all mean the same thing, but they're just uh, for different browsers. Uh, but we need to get all of them, so I'll just uh, select all of them and copy. We don't need this selector uh, because that we've already uh, made our selector, as you know. And I'll copy that and I'll go back into Dreamweaver. And I want to paste this in the default style um, so that it knows that uh, whatever, whenever the, um, the state changes, like hover, for example, um, it will animate uh, all the uh, properties. So I'll just paste that below all my other ones there. And uh, now if I save this or preview this in live view, it should animate uh, in and out uh, when when the state changes uh, to hover. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, I'll just show you another couple quick things. Um, if we wanted to maybe uh, use a background image instead of a solid color, that would be easy to do. Uh, maybe I wanted this uh, first box to have a background image or something like that. I'll just come in here in my uh, in my code and add the attribute uh, ID and give it the value of one right here. So now this one, this first box has the ID of one. And uh, if I go and give this one a CSS style now, uh, it will give us a really specific uh, CSS selector. It's saying the ID one inside my ID hover boxes. That's just fine. I'll say OK. And I'm just going to go to my background tab and browse for a background image. I already have one here, this swirl BG. Say OK. And now that has sort of a background image. You know, it's, that looks kind of ugly, but that's OK. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I'll just show you guys a different example if maybe I wanted to uh, give one, uh, each of these boxes a different color. Maybe I'd, um, I'd also give this uh, second one the ID of 2. And if I make a style for this one now, I can give this one the background color uh, maybe I'll make this one orange or something. And now this one is sort of uh, an orange box. And, you know, they all still get that same CSS transition. It's just you might have these all a different color or something. Anyway, that's a pretty simple trick uh, that uh, a lot of people might want to use um, for different sort of things. Maybe you could use this for a navigation or uh, maybe just a a grid of different um, uh, images or something like that. Uh, neat little trick you can use.